Thank you for joining me, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Um, we're up to Article 48, complete what you started to do. I think this is going to be manipulative by the sound of things, um, but let's see how we go. We'll do an order on this. We'll see if we can get a pass or a fail. Jehovah's allows us to choose our course in life. Well, why wouldn't he? He teaches us how to make good choices. He helps us to now. How does he do? How does he teach and help us? We need to go to the Holy Spirit helps us list. Let's try that. But here, this one was a good one, wasn't it? The seventeen ways in which the Holy Spirit helps us. I'll just leave that up, and you can view this while we're going along. Um, when we make decisions that please him. And now how do we please Jehovah? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Uh, For without faith it is impossible to please God. So we have faith. Faith in what? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The more we apply the wisdom found in God's word. Now we've got to go, I'm going to go to the Bible gateway because it's easy to use. Bible Gateway, whoops, the Bible Gateway, we'll go there and we just want to put wisdom in and I want to show you something very interesting, sorry I got my cap locks on, um, about the Lord Jesus Christ, the good Lord Jesus Christ in the book of, is it a fee, it might be Second Corinthians, Colossians. Okay, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Um, it's Colossians 2, 3. We'll go to Colossians 2. Because when we talk about wisdom, you cannot leave out the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to know what a great conflict I have had for you and those in Laodicea. And for as many as have seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. The full assurance is that we will go to be with the Lord, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So when we talk about wisdom and knowledge and all the other stuff. Let's start with the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father. Even when we make a wise decision, however, we may struggle to complete what we started. Well, it depends. If you're the one really forcing something on yourself and you're not starting, then you're doing something that you don't want to do. And I think now that the Watchtower is starting to realize there are people that are backing off because they're giving themselves the opportunity to do constructive research on the organization. And it's startling for some people to realize that the organization is a cult. And it harms people and it hurts people. And, and that's why people are starting to back off. If you don't believe in something, you can say you're going to do it, but you won't do it. it talks about somebody starting to read the Bible that didn't finish. A person that wanted to be a pioneer but just wouldn't commit. The body of elders um, wanting to make humanity um, unanimous decisions. See, this is all manipulative. It's saying, go and shepherd the congregation. Obviously, the elders are back and back. They're back and off. They don't believe in what they're doing. They don't believe in the organization that they're following. Because if they did, this would all be in order. These situations differ, but they have something in common. The decisions were not fully implemented. No, people didn't follow through because there was elements of unbelief. And those elements of unbelief are more than likely legitimate. The first century Christians in Corinth faced a similar challenge. Note what we can learn from them. In 55 CE, the Corinthians made an important decision. They learned that their brothers in Jerusalem and Judea were suffering hardships and poverty and that other congregations were collecting money to help them. Oh my gosh, what about the poor Jehovah Witnesses in Russia at the moment? Out of kindness and generosity, the Corinthians Friends resolved to donate to this effort and asked the Apostle Paul how they could help. He sent instructions to the congregation of Port of Titus to assist in the collection. A few months later, though, 
Paul learned that the Corinthians had not followed through. As a result, the gift would not likely be ready in time for it to be taken to Jerusalem along with the contributions. So this is about money not being sent. Um, the Corinthians have made a good decision, but they hadn't followed through. The experience teaches us that even favourable Christians may struggle to implement a good decision, and that's not that's not unnatural or not normal. Let the Corinthian, like the Corinthians, we may find it difficult to carry out our decisions. You might if you're not believing in what you're doing, or you haven't got the passion to do what this organisation wants you to do. Why? Because of imperfection, we may simply procrastinate. What? A lot of people don't realize this, and you'll find this in Romans 7, that males particularly procrastinate in religion because they think there's something they need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And one of the consequences of this is um, passivity. They won't go to work. They go into depression. All sorts of strange, unusual, unmasculine things begin to happen to males that don't get their religion right. And maybe you're married to someone that's in this predicament at the moment. Um, I'll tell you, if people are loaded with the idea that they need to make God happy or stop him from being sad by the things they do or don't do, outside the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and having faith in that, all these sorts of things will come on that person, guaranteed. Or unforeseen events might make it impossible for us to follow through with what we have decided to do. How can we review a decision and discern if we should adjust it? Well, simple common sense would prevail for a start. And gee, they're bold, bringing in Romans chapter 7. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, there dwells nothing good. For I have the desire to do what is fine, but not the ability to carry it out. And the reason for this is, if you know the context of Romans chapter 7, was because they were told to do... They were being told that there was something they needed to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, as we learn from um, Romans. Clearly tells you this. The whole argument of Romans is to, therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ. You have to become dead to the things you think you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad because of the finished work of Christ. Now, Paul was speaking to the Messianic believers in Rome and trying to help them understand that you can leave the Lord behind, the law, should I say, L-A-W, the Mosaic law behind, and come to Christ. Don't bring it with you, because it's going to cause trouble. Um, that you may be married to another, to him who ra was raised from the dead. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, that we should bear fruit to God. Now, when don't you bear fruit to God? For when we were in the flesh, that's under the Mosaic law, speaking to the Judaistic believers, the sinful passions which were aroused by what? Now, not many of you people know that the sinful passions are aroused by the things we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Did you know that's the best way of defining the law in New Testament terms as far as I'm concerned? It is the things we think that we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And all that it does is arouse our sinful, evil nature. And this is why there's so much sin in Christianity. Because people think that by trying to keep the law, they're impressing God, when God's really not worried about that at all. All they're doing is arousing their sinful passions and bringing those passions to alive in themselves and in their members to bear fruit to death. Now, I don't know if many of you can comprehend that, but you need to understand that trying to do things to make God happy or stop him from being sad is going to turn you evil. But now we have been delivered from the law. And he's speaking to Jews, not Gentiles, because we were never under the law, having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit, there he is, the Holy Spirit over here. There's 17 things that he helps us with. And not in the oldness of the letter. So just, and it goes on and on about how the law and the things we think we need to do or not do will deceive us into sin. To make God happy or stop him from being sad. We can't make God happy or stop him from being sad. We haven't got that kind of influence over him. 
All we can do is turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this subject is one of the being one of the great downfalls of humanity. Now, they're very brave using Romans chapter 7 because it says, For I know that in me, that is in my sinful nature, not his body, but his sinful nature in this context, there dwells nothing good. Our sinful nature has nothing good in it whatsoever. For I have the desire to do what is fine, but not the ability to carry it out, because he was deceived by the things he thought that he needed to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Instead of just surrendering to the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and just allowing, unconsciously even, to let the Holy Spirit guide through life. We take religion way beyond where it belongs in our minds and our hearts. So how can we review a decision and discern if we should adjust it? And how can we be more effective at completing what we start? Well, you can rely on the Holy Spirit for a start. The Lord Jesus Christ hasn't got a mention. The Holy Spirit hasn't got a mention. Um, just appalling theology. Just This is just propaganda literature um, given to the members of an organization that's commonly known as a cult, being banned in nations all around the world as a nuisance organization. Some important decisions we would never change. For example, we stick to our decision to serve Jehovah. No, not true, not true. Um, for the Jehovah Witnesses, they're forced in their decision to serve Jehovah. Because if you don't, you'll be disfellowshipped or you'll be marked as um, having something wrong with you. And we are determined to be faithful to our marriage mate. Well, no, not so. Again, this, this is what we would prefer um, and probably aim for, but it's not necessarily going to turn out that way. And the divorce rate in Christendom overall, none less the Jehovah Witnesses, is appalling. And it's because of what I tried to show you here. Because sin, our sinful nature, through the things we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, will become exceedingly sinful. It costs our, us our marriages. It costs us our devotion to God. Other decisions, though, may need to be adjusted. Why? Because circumstances change. What steps can help us to make the best decisions possible? Pray for wisdom. Okay, is the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned there? No word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fail. Do thorough research. Oh my God, do thorough research. Consult God's word. Read the publications of Jehovah's organization. Um, and talk to people whom you can trust. That's fair enough. Um, make sure, though, that they're theologically sound. You can trust someone, but they could be the devil. You don't know. You've got to do constructive, critical research outside the literature and the propaganda of this organization. Such research is vital before making a decision to change jobs, to move, to change religions, or to choose appropriate education to help you support your ministry. What about your, your family? Education based on a career. Analyze your motives. Might I remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit haven't got a men mention yet. Our motives matter to Jehovah. Um, really? He wants us to be honest in all things. So when we make decisions, he wants us to be honest in all things of all the hypocritical things to say. So when we make decisions, we too want to be honest with ourselves and with others about our motives. They take away to this organization a lot of private, necessity um, you know sometimes our motives can go astray but you don't have to tell the whole world about it people aren't blind if we were not completely honest we would likely have difficulty sticking to our decision well the the watchtower isn't they're about as dishonest as you can get and they're sticking to what they're doing aren't they so this is just propaganda this is just manipulative trying to motivate people to serve the watchtower more for example, a young brother, what young brother may decide to become a regular pioneer? After some time, however, he struggles to fulfill an hour requirement. Well, who wouldn't? And he finds little joy in his ministry. Well, who wouldn't? 
Honestly, who wouldn't? He may have thought that his main motive for pioneering was his desire to please Jehovah. Could it be, though, that he was primarily motivated by a desire to please his parents or some other person he admired? Not uncommon. Not uncommon. Consider the situation of a Bible student who decides to give up smoking. Oh, whoopee do. At first he struggles doing well for a week or two, but then he gives in to the urge to smoke. Finally, though, he is successful. Yeah, one step forward, two steps back. His love for Jehovah and his desire to please him have helped him to conquer the habit. Couldn't have been surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit help him? <clears throat> Be specific. The more specific you are, the more likely you are to complete what you start. For example, you may... Well, you can't get any more specific than what was talked about back here. You can be the specific, but that's not necessarily a guarantee of success. Be realistic. Um, none of us have the time, resources, or the energy to do everything that we'd like to do. But So be realistic and reasonable. And this may mean you need to step away from these religious activities to get things, the rest of the things right in your life. When necessary, you may need to change a decision that it was beyond your ability to accomplish. Suppose, though, you that you reviewed your decision, adjusted it as needed, and feel that you can't implement it. Well, consider five steps. This is more like a um, business talk, isn't it? Pray for wisdom. Do thorough research. This thorough research one, that would get, if they really went to YouTube and, and researched this organisation, they'd be leaving by the millions. Analyse your motives. Be specific. Be realistic. Pray for strength, create a plan. No mention of the Lord Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. Exert yourself. You're supposed to surrender to Christ. Manage your time wisely, focus on the outcome. Steps to implement your decision. Pray for the strength. Pray for strength to act. Okay, there you go. Create a plan. This is a terrible theological failure. No mention of the Lord Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. Um, exert yourself. No mention of the Lord, no mention of the Holy Spirit. And that's probably the quickest audit I've ever done because it was such a pathetic article. I don't know what to say. If you're a business person and you need some kind of positive outlook, it might help you. But theologically, it's as dead as a fish floating upside down in the water. Dead. It's, it's a drowned fish. It's a terrible failure. The result or outcome of your decision is to be the destiny of your destination of your journey. If you really want to reach that destination, you will keep going even if a road is closed and then must change your route. In the same way, if we focus on the outcome of our decisions, we will not give up easily when we encounter setbacks or detours. And they're bold enough and shrewd enough to mention Galatians, which talks about the same thing as Romans 7. And it's all about trying not to make God happy or stop him from being sad by the things we think we need to do or not do. It's about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the conflicts and consequences between the two. This is probably one of the worst um, articles I've ever given time to read. We've done it in 18 minutes. Nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing about the Holy Spirit. It's like a positive thinking meeting in some kind of positive thinking organization. <sighs> That's a fail. That's a theological fail. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. And before I go, what's the next article? Gee, that article is poor. Very, very poor. Um, I think it's the last one. Did you know? What role does stewards play in the Bible times? Oh, well, this is going to be funny, isn't it? Well, um, Article 48 failed miserably. One audit it took for Article 48. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.